you have always had a sneaking suspicion that your gut issues were impacting your acne, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to explain these six action steps you can take to start to heal your gut issues so that you can eat whatever you want at brunch again without having to worry about whether or not it's going to make you break out or make your acne worse. And this is coming from someone who has helped over 1,000 women clear their acne naturally with food. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified for more natural acne clearing tips. The gut skin axis is the reason that you feel like your chronic gut issues are linked to your acne because they in fact there were two doctors that discovered this theory called the gut skin axis. And it basically states that what happens in your gut shows up in your skin. And these two doctors, John H. Stokes and Donald Pillsbury, determined this after running an experiment. They hypothesized that if and when you added lactobacillus acidophilus cultures to your gut, you would see a big improvement in your acne. You would see an improvement in your skin challenges. And lo and behold, they were correct. 100% of the patients that employed this method saw a decrease in acne breakouts and saw their skin be positively impacted by this. So that being said, how does this relate to you and how can you start to heal your gut to clear your acne naturally? The two biggest issues I see with most of my clients come down to kind of two themes. You're either dealing with chronic constipation or chronic leaky gut issues. Let's discuss. From a constipation perspective, and when I say constipation, let's define. Let's say you are someone who doesn't really know when you're gonna go number two. Okay, you don't know. Could be tomorrow, could be next week. That's definitely constipation. Ideally, honestly, we're going one to three times a day after every big meal and or right when you wake up. So honestly, the ideal is when you wake up, you go to the bathroom within like 30 minutes, then maybe after lunch and after dinner. That's ideal, I know. I know. So if you're watching this thinking to yourself, oh my, that's fine. I typically see clients struggle with this issue under two conditions. Number one, they've been on the birth control pill for an extended period of time and or they were on oral antibiotics for an extended period of time. Constipation after these two medicines is super common because it can lead to a gut dysbiosis, number one, which means the wrong bacteria is kind of running amok. And or number two, your liver is struggling to detoxify out excess estrogen or excess testosterone, which can again lead to more oil at the pore. So basically your systems of detoxification are struggling for some reason. And that will most likely make it so that you don't know when you're gonna go to the bathroom next. Now, from an action step perspective, there are three main action steps that I always recommend you start if you're chronically constipated. <laughs> I'm giggling because the first one, you're gonna be like, mm, are you sure? The first one is that number one, you wake up first thing in the morning and you have eight to 12 ounces of water the second you wake up. This jump starts your digestion and I promise you, I would almost bet a lot of money on the fact that if you are chronically constipated, it is also due to the fact that you're not drinking enough water. And how do I know this? Oh, maybe because I used to do it all the time. I did not drink enough water. And when I tell you I did not drink enough water, I mean like I would have a, a cup, like a, I don't wanna say a cup, cause obviously I had more than a cup, but I would have maybe like 30 to 50 ounces a day when in fact, if I was working out a lot and sweating a lot, I probably needed a hundred. And I will tell you, <laughs> I thought, I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought this was the stupidest action step I had ever heard, okay? If and when doctors would say to me, oh, how much water are you drinking? If and when I told them I was struggling with constipation and then I'd say whatever it was and then they'd tell me to drink more, I would just laugh. I thought it was stupid. The joke's on me. Next action step that I'd love for you to take if you're struggling with chronic constipation is to add in a quality probiotic with 10 billion organisms or more that includes lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium. These two bacterial cultures are linked back to that study that I shared and they've been shown to improve the gut. They're also really good for us. You'll see them in yogurt, for example, and they will absolutely support you from a constipation perspective. The third action step you can take to really improve constipation is to have a probiotic food two to three times a week. Now, let's say you start having more water, you start a probiotic, and then you eat a ton of probiotics foods every day. You might be going a little more than you want to. Not gonna lie about that either. So ease this in to the equation. Okay, we wanna ease it in. You're gonna have three a week. So that looks like grabbing a bottle of kombucha, having one on Monday, one on Wednesday, one on Friday. That's how simple that can be. 
if this is resonating right now, if you're excited to start these constipation action steps, hit the like button to make sure that you'll be notified when I post more. And I want to mention too, my client Angelina struggled with a lot of these challenges after coming off the birth control pill. And once we implemented these action steps, everything shifted for her. So I'm really excited for you to start them. Let's discuss the second problem you might be dealing with from a gut perspective, and that's leaky gut, AKA IBS. If you're struggling with IBS, and the reason I put it like that is because it's a really frustrating diagnosis to get because it just means irritable bowel syndrome. It doesn't define anything in particular. And I'm sure if you've had tests done or had an endoscopy or colonoscopy or all the things and we're told, oh, you have IBS, you were like, okay, and now what? Comment below yes if that's you because I'd love to hear your story. And that's super, super common and very frustrating. I see IBS often due to the two reasons that I sh just shared before. So birth control pill use, doxycycline use, but then there's a third factor that I see. And that often has to do with consuming foods that you're intolerant to. Now, this is tricky. This part is tricky. And I wanna be really careful with how I talk about this. There are two types of food issues as it relates to your gut. You have food allergies or you have food intolerances. Food allergies are like a peanut allergy. We all know someone who's really allergic to something like that, can't have it, has an EpiPen. That is a no holds bar, you must respect this problem type of problem, right? Always. The rest of food intolerances live under the sensitivities umbrella, intolerances umbrella, and they're actually almost 100% of the time linked to gut dysbiosis. So most of the time, if you find that, again, if you haven't been diagnosed with celiacs or a specific food allergy done via an allergy test, but you've just been told that you have intolerances to things like eggs or almonds or dairy, that is most likely actually a gut issue more so than it is like, oh, you can never touch bread or gluten or anything again. It's more linked to gut dysbiosis. What happens, that being said, if when you're dealing with gut dysbiosis, so you have the wrong bacteria hanging out, right? That opportunistic bacteria that I spoke about before, and you continue to eat foods that irritate things even further and or your body can't process well because you don't have the right bacterial makeup, what happens is you can start to struggle with intestinal permeability, so AKA leaky gut. And it just means that you have like tiny little areas of irritation throughout your digestive tract that make it difficult for you to absorb and assimilate nutrients. I always think about it kind of like, perfect example, I just thought of this, I'm happy. Think about the like lining of your gut, almost like a sponge. Okay, and imagine that sponge gets a ton of holes in it. And so it's like the nutrients go right through and or the vitamins and minerals that you, ne you see need go right through, the bacteria goes right through. All of these things that you need, you end up losing them. Then you'll be struggling with low levels of vitamins and minerals, super, super common, especially after the birth control pill or doxycycline. And then these issues with food and digesting and assimilating food gets worse because you have more irritation at the lining of the gut. Like it kind of becomes this domino effect from an internal perspective. There are three action steps I love to recommend if you're struggling with IBS and or leaky gut. And usually when I see that present, you're going to the bathroom a lot. So you have like diarrhea multiple times a day and or a lot of stomach cramping and bloating. If you have bloating plus constipation, take the action steps that I mentioned before. But if you have IBS stuff and chronic like cramping, again, you've been to the doctor all the things and no one knows what's wrong, but you have chronic cramping, chronic diarrhea, and or like really inconsistent bathroom habits, that generally leans you towards IBS. And some action steps that I love to recommend are number one, have that eight to 12 ounces of water that I shared before, but again, always check with your doctor, I'm not one. You can add a shot glass of aloe juice. I have found that that has totally supported some gut healing for me over the, over the years. I've definitely had gastritis and all these like random gut health things. So if and when you're struggling with something like that, make sure to have that action step, add in some aloe juice. You can buy it at a health food store. It's really calming. And on that same note, I really love licorice and or marshmallow root tea. Again, really calming and soothing to your digestive tract. You can find, I think there's a tea called Everyday Detox that has both of those. I drink that every night. Chef's kiss. And final step, and again, I'm so careful with this action step because people run with it. I say one thing and then we go really far. If you know that a food bothers your stomach, and by that I mean when you eat it, you get bloated or cramped or have diarrhea immediately. Those are the only three conditions. You get bloated immediately, you get really bad cramping, or you have diarrhea immediately. I'm saying a 30 minute window, okay? Remove that one food for two weeks and see how your stomach feels. Don't guess about this. If a food truly bothers your, your gut, you will know quickly. 
it'll be <laughs> very apparent. But if you're confused, if you're wondering, it's probably not actually the issue that you think it is, which is fine and actually a good thing. Just one food based on very specific information and that is a 30 minute window of a strong reaction. Now, here's the secret a lot of the internet doesn't want you to know and that secret is that eating more foods will help you heal your acne, not harm your acne. Remember I mentioned dysbiosis earlier. I mentioned the concept of dysbiosis. It just means impaired gut health, essentially. The reason I like to highlight this issue is because it's just basically describing the problem between opportunistic and beneficial bacteria in your digestive tract. Ideally, we want to feed beneficial bacteria. We want to feed the type of bacteria that helps our gut and our body thrive. And we do that by eating a ton of different foods. Generally speaking, if and when you remove a lot of food groups, you're going to struggle a, lit, a little bit with biodiversity from like an overall food perspective, and that can negatively harm your gut. So along with all the action steps that I just shared, I actually want you to focus on eating more. This is exactly what we do in the Clear Code, my natural acne clearing program. We actually have you add foods back into your diet because I have a feeling if you're here and you've been having gut issues for a long time from an acne perspective, you've probably removed a lot of things which makes you feel bad and isn't actually gonna help the issue in the long run. So if you're interested in eating more foods, eating a wider variety of foods, and you just need help solving this gut acne equation, Apply to the clear code via the link below. We will define your root acne triggers, specifically define action steps that we can take to help improve your gut health, which will then positively impact your acne. We'll define a meal plan for you, along with all of the customized action steps based on your skin and your lifestyle to get you clear skin naturally, and then create a checklist, your clear code, that allows you to keep your skin clear beyond the program so that you can have clear skin for life naturally. If you wanna go a little bit deeper, that being said, first, before applying to the program, we have a Root Acne Triggers webinar, wherein I go over the seven main reasons for your acne, plus give you nine action steps you can take to start to heal your acne naturally from the inside. So make sure you click the link below for that too. And make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. And if you know someone that would benefit from this video, please share this with them and or comment with them below, tag them below so that they can see that there is in fact a link between your gut and your acne. You're not crazy. And these are some action steps you can take and or a resource you can check out to see if we can help you heal your acne naturally. See you next time.